Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today I'm going to show you how to make a clickable carousel in Paper Vision 3D. Here's the carousel right now, and you see when you click on it, uh, it changes position. And when you click on one of the images, they become active. So let me give you a few of the details. All this code is, of course, free on the clickable carousel. You can find that at Google Code. Just go to code.google.com forward slash p forward slash yahoo map api. Let's go there right now. Now I've posted the carousel on the Yahoo Maps because we actually use that. We integrated that into the Yahoo Maps in the next few tutorials. So you actually need this. Uh, if you go to downloads, uh, just click on click carousel.zip and you can download the whole package unzip it and place it in your Flex 3 and it will run so that's the whole thing so good luck with that and you can go through that code as well and see how it was created we're gonna briefly go through the code but let me describe how it was created here first uh, there is a flash version of the carousel out online it's a great version uh, it's not clickable and it's not flex but uh, let's go to that website right now so I found this version of the uh, carousel and flash and this is on the flash blog so go there and you can download the flaw if you're working in flash and it has all the sample code it's not clickable you won't actually get the images to do anything when you click on them in our version we have and our version is in flex but this was very instrumental in actually making the carousel work and you can see my carousel function just exactly as this one does thank you so much to the creator okay let's get out of that so there was a posting on the Paper Vision 3D blog about making a clickable cube. So I was able to take that posting and the flaw in the other uh, website and mix them together and create this uh, clickable system. If you want to learn more about Paper Vision, of course, we have a number of YouTube videos up now, or putting up more. And we have Paper Vision 3D getting started in Flex 3 by uh, Amanda Verrett. And then a 1 and 2 on Paper Vision 3D Second Life nav system, where we explain the render engine of Paper Vision. So go there if you want to learn more, and let me explain the code to you. We are in Flex 3 right now, and I'm going to talk about the clickable carousel code, and it's called Click Carousel, and this is exactly what you'll see when you uh, uh, basically unzip and paste this into Flex. So we've given you all the code, so I'm going to go through it quickly. I'm assuming you've watched it, the previous uh, YouTube videos referred to earlier, or that you understand Paper Vision very well, and Flex. Of course, first you have all your input statements uh, that are required to get Paper Vision running. There's the Carina uh, transitions, which is important for the carousel to work. The number of items is the number of clickable images in your carousel. If you want to increase that, just change the number. 600 is the radius of the carousel. This angle is very important here, which sets the images in their different positions. And angle X will be changed as we spin the carousel or spin around the carousel. The DEST number is important because that tells us the position of our camera as we spin around the carousel. You're going to see the stuff we've talked about earlier in previous Paper Vision 3D uh, tutorials the viewport, the scene, the camera, the renderer. This is the engine of Paper Vision. And then the plane array, that's actually the plane that we stick the images onto. So let's go down a little bit more. We initiate the function. And let's go back up to the line. So when the code runs, you can see right here, there's an application complete, which once that's fired, initiates the function. We immediately go to the initiation function. And this code is initiated, and Paper Vision is set into motion, as been discussed earlier. We see the button mode is true. Uh, the render engine is set into action, and the camera and is set as well. And we have two functions down here, create objects and add event listener. The create objects is actually the function that essentially puts the images on the stage. And the way those images are placed onto the uh, planes is through this bitmap file material. And what's very interesting here is very important in the code is this images forward slash city uh, plus i plus dot jpeg. So the i is iterating through the images and pulling them from the images library. Let's open up the images library right here. We see that's called city one, two, three, four, and five. So as the planes are generated in the for loop right here, we see we go all, all the way up to the number of items. Then that I number right there is placed into 
the position here and the city uh, images are pulled in one by one. Uh, very easy to do. And, and So now that we've created our objects, now we want to add some event listeners. So let's go down to the event listener function. One way to do that is hit the control key and click on the function. And there we are at the event listener. And we're going to add the interframe render and everything's going to start rendering. You can see here in the rendering, we have the camera, which is set to what type of camera? Very important. If you scroll back up, you see we've uh, chosen the camera 3D, which allows us to basically spin around the carousel. So it's not the carousel that's moving. It's actually the camera that's moving around the carousel. Okay, let's go back down. So we set that rendering engine into place. So I'm on my render engine right now. And you can see, once again, those are that camera that's spinning around the uh, carousel. And I have a move right and move left button. So I, when I click the move right, basically I increment the destination by one, and I throw that into a tweening function, which basically multiplies the angle that I'm at and tweens me to the next position. And the uh, destination minus minus, when I hit the left button, basically subtracts one, uh, goes right back into the tweening function, and multiplies and tweens me back uh, the other way. So that's how the carousel is moving. Well, where's the clickable part come into place? Let's take a look at that right now. Okay, I'm going to show you how I made these images clickable. So when you click on it, the image gets larger or gets smaller. You can actually put a switch case in there and you can actually have that go to different websites or bring up different images into Flex. This is just base code for you to get started. So let's show you how I do this. Let's go back. So I'm back in the code and I'm in the create object portion. And when I create the objects, I make the uh, material interact if I set that to true. And a little bit lower, I come down here to where the plane is, and I add a listener. And we're going to call this interactive uh, scene 3D event dot object arts underscore press. And I'm giving that a toggle function. So basically what happens is whenever I'm over plane, uh, this toggle function is being listened to. And when I click on it, the toggle function is fired. Let's click on this and go to the toggle function. And in the toggle function, I basically uh, am stating if the image is in or out, or if it's been clicked on or not clicked on. And if it has uh, not been clicked on, I fire a move out function. And if it has, I fire a move back function. And all the move out and move back functions are doing are basically using the tweener to expand, scale the uh, image larger or scale the image back to its original size. So extremely easy um, function. Hey, I, I didn't know how to do this until I started doing the work on it. I'm giving it to you away for free because uh, I've seen a number of these on the web and Flash are really nice, and some people are selling them for about twenty dollars a piece. Uh, but you know, we're basically an education community. We want to get people into a paper vision 3D, and also in our new paper life 3D uh, uh, project that we're working on. So uh, uh, I think this is a great project. Uh, this is great base code for you to to go and play around with. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and email me. But let me say, uh, here's the code. Go for it, enjoy it, and we're glad to give it to you.